Hi everyone, welcome to Channel Logics. Hope all you guys are preparing well and staying safe at your home. Since we have started our online classes in this one year span of time, we have trained several thousands of students preparing for various competitive exams. If you want to meet our expert faculty team, you can meet our expert faculty team and we are going to come across with best and unique content which will help you to crack your examinations in a smart way. We are going to teach each and every subject very clearly in detail and we are going to come across with best and smart approaches which will help you to crack your examinations in very short span of time. Our expert faculty team is going to teach you each and every subject very clearly in detail. If you want, you can join our free foundation batch. This free foundation batch, you need not pay any money for this and in this free foundation batch, you can meet our expert faculty team who are going to teach each and every subject very clearly in detail. If you have any doubts, you can contact us through these numbers and we welcome you to be part of Chandan Logics. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back to Chandan Logics. Today in this session, we'll be going to discuss March 26th and 27th current affairs. And now, let us begin our session. At the end of our session, we'll be even going to discuss practice questions based on the descriptive concepts. And now, let us begin the descriptive session. But before going to start with the descriptive concepts, even if you want to download free PDFs of current affairs, just join through Telegram channel. Actually, there will be uploading current affairs. Is it clear? That is regarding current affairs PDFs. And you can get download for these free PDFs, whatever we'll be providing in our Telegram channel. And also, once you go through, that means if you want to watch Telugu current affairs, go through Chandan Logic's Telugu YouTube channel. There will be uploading Telugu current affairs on daily basis. And you can, you can consider here regarding free PDFs for Telugu current affairs and as well as regarding our daily English current affairs. The concepts will be similar but the explanation will be done in Telugu language in Telugu current affairs. And now let us begin our session with the descriptive concepts. So first let us begin our session with the national current affairs. So actually even we will be going to discuss in our session regarding national current affairs, state news and regarding awards and honors and as well as important days and even we will be discussing obituaries regarding your exam point of view. And now if we start with the first concept regarding national news. So here comes the first concept all about the concept call which is known as a Bipolby Bharat Gallery in Bengal. Now let us discuss in detail about this concept. And if we move into the concept here, recently Prime Minister Narendra Modi virtually inaugurated the gallery called, which is known as Biplobi Bharat Gallery in Bengal. And now let us know what is the objective for inaugurating this particular, what is that, which is known as a Bharat Gallery in Bengal. Actually, this Bharat Gallery is going to represent what? Zikliyo, I hope that you are getting the point. And here you can consider, the inauguration was done virtually via the video conferencing. You can get into the image here. So that actually, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has inaugurated a gallery called Bipolbi Bharat Gallery in Bengal. And also, you can consider here, what is the purpose for inaugurating the gallery? Here the objective of this new gallery is all about providing a holistic view of the events which actually led up to 1947 and also which highlights the role which is actually played by the important freedom fighters and the revolutionaries which is led up to the year called 1947 right and also here in this particular gallery they'll be going to represent all the revolutionaries and the freedom fighters even the historical background which is up to the mark of 1947 so this is actually the overall purpose and the objective for inaugurating a Bharat gallery. And you can consider here, this gallery actually depicts the contribution of revolutionaries and which is towards the freedom struggle of India and also the holistic view of events that led to 1947. What does the year 1947 marks here? 1947 which marks actually all about the freedom struggle which is regarding India's independence. As we know that this year as we have celebrating the part called Azadika Amrit Mahotsav celebrations. So they actually started which is in the year 1947 which marks and plays an important role in the Indian history. 
and here comes to the concept all about the gallery which depicts all about the historical background and the holistic view of the revolutionaries freedom fighters and the freedom struggle which led to the year called 1947 and this is the main objective for inaugurating the which is known as by Paul B. Bharat gallery in Bengal and even this particular gallery will be going to represent also showcases the revolutionary movement formation of significant associations by the revolutionary leaders particularly all about spreading of the movement and also formation of INA what it actually represents Indian National Army and even including the contribution of the naval mutiny so even including Indian National Army and also the contributions regarding naval mutiny so these were also showcasing in the gallery called by Plobby Bharat gallery which is in Bengal I hope that you have clear with this concept and then if we move to the next concept let us discuss in detail so here comes to all about a new target which was set up by the civil aviation so here you can consider the concept all about recently the government set the target which is to create 220 new airports by the year 2025 so just have a glance over the targeted year here comes to the year called 2025 so this is the target actually the government has been set up but for what which is to create 220 new airports is it clear and then if we move to the concept here Union Civil Aviation Minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya recently stated that about government has set a target to create 220 new airports by the year 2025 and also which you can concentrate here with citing the civil aviation industry as a critical component of India's economy you can relate it here how actually civil aviation is focusing or related towards the Indian economy right so this is one of the important concept once after the session go through the concept called civil aviation how actually it helps to improve Indian economy right and then in response to this civil aviation ministries request for the grants which is for 2022 to 23 and the main objective is to create the new airports in India and also you can consider here Sindhya recently stated that India has made the progress in both as well as domestic and the foreign travels even during the COVID-19 pandemic situation even during that period also even India has actually reached a target and also made the travels even regarding domestic and as well as foreign travels so by considering all these considerations even here that is regarding the ministry called civil aviation ministry has come up with the initiative and also the decision is all about for setting up and to create 220 new airports by the year 2025 i hope that you were clear with this concept now let us discuss the next concept under summits and conferences so here comes to the concept all about the conference called Indian Psychiatristic which is known as the Society of National Conference which actually begins in Vishakapatnam. So here you have to note a point regarding the examination point of view actually the last national conference which is based on Indian Psychiatric Society. So it was held 37 years ago in Vishakapatnam and now in the year 2022 you can consider here the 73rd edition of this Indian Psychiatric Society actually conducted a national conference this is for the 73rd time but 37 years ago it actually was held in Vishakapatnam now after 37 years again in Vishakapatnam this particular conference called Indian Psychiatric Society National Conference begins in Vishakapatnam and now let us discuss the overall objective of the conference here we have done with the numerical concept which actually represents the edition so here comes to the edition called 73rd annual and which focuses on the national conference of indian psychiatric society and then moving to the scheduled so actually this was scheduled on 26th of march which is organized which has been organized in Vishakapatnam and the edition of 2022 is 73rd edition and what is 37 years ago what is this all about don't be confused here just make it clear the, with the concept here in the session itself actually here that is past 37 years ago in Vishakapatnam 
the particular conference which is based on indian psychiatric society national conference was held in visakhapatnam now again after 37 years in the same location called visakhapatnam this particular conference called indian psychiatric society national conference has been held is it clear and then here the experts from various parts of india and a few from abroad were participated in this 3 day conference which actually held at wiser convention at madravada you have to concentrate here about the duration of the conference and here the duration is all about three day conference even from abroad and also by considering from the various parts of india also many people actually has took part in this particular conference and this is a national level conference which is all about focusing on indian psychiatric society and then here you can consider the theme for this particular conference is or 2022 theme is bridging the minds connecting generations right so this is the theme of 2022 73rd national conference is it clear and here comes to the bridging minds and then moving to the concept called the connecting generations and you can consider this was very appropriate which is in the view of growing generation gap and also its impact on the society how actually the generation gap is impact on the society so by considering this the theme has been taken into the picture and here the theme is what bridging the gap and which is regarding the connecting generation so this is the theme of 2022 national conference of indian psychiatric society is it clear and then if we move to the next concept and awards and honors so before going to discuss the with this concept i hope that you were clear with this all the concepts till now whatever we have done with in our today's session and now let us discuss the concept under awards and honors and if you were having any of a doubts regarding the concepts is it clear so just try to mention in the comment section just neglect the pronunciations regarding the sessions because in in a, in a, you can consider here in english language pronunciation is different from your different personalities just neglect it but regarding the subject if you were having any of the doubts just mention clearly in the comment section i hope that you were clear with my point and now if we discuss under the concept called awards and honors today it is in current affair all about regarding a person called devendra jajaria so recently the person has become and here the significance is that the person has become the first para athlete to receive padma bhushan and here just have a glance over the person called devendra jajaria who actually receiving padma bhushan by the hands of the president and here you can consider the significance of the person the person has been categorized in the list of first para athlete to receive one of the highest civilian award of india called padma bhushan and here if we move to the concept actually the person has won many paralympic medals including gold at 2024 paralympic in athens and 2016 rio olympic games and silver medal at 2020 tokyo olympics recently also we have done with tokyo olympics and the paralympic games so regarding the tokyo paralympic games also the person has been even have won many number of awards so here devendra jaria is the per first person that is to set as a para athlete to receive one of the highest civilian award of india known as padma bhushan i hope that you were clear with the concept and then next if we move to the concept in the same session even we can cover under the awards the other person is that avani lekara so a para shooter which also who also awarded the one of the highest civilian award called padma shri award and even you can consider here she is the actually the first indian woman to win two paralympic medal in the same games and the other significance about avani lekara is as well as the first indian woman to end paralympic gold is it clear so here the other significance is avani lekara actually the first indian woman to win the para two paralympic medals in the same games and as well as first indian woman to end the paralympic gold medal and recently the person has received one of the highest civilian award called padma shri just have a glance over the image here avani lekara actually receiving a padma shri award one of the prestigious award of the highest civilian award of india and by the hands of the president of india and then if we move to the next concept under defense news so now let us cover the concept here which is known as 
exercise does lick so here this is actually between india and as well as uzbekistan army recently it has been begun and here if we discuss all about the concept but first let us focus on the title itself here comes to the point exam point of view actually exercise does lick so which actually represents uzbekistan and as well as india so now let us discuss in detail what is the objective and what is the motto for conducting the exercise between these two nations and before going to discuss about the exercise first let us discuss the static part of uzbekistan so here you need to follow the formula called cq which actually represents capital country and as well as currency so here uzbekistan capital is tashkent and the currency is uzbekistani som and if it is necessary just make a note and regarding the pres current scenario here uzbekistan president is shafkat merziyov is a president of uzbekistan so the static part as we have covered in our session parallel with the dynamic concept and now let us move to the current affair all about the exercise called dust league between india and uzbekistan so 2022 represents which of the following edition so it represents third edition of the joining which actually a joint training exercise named as exercise dust link which is between indian army and uzbekistan army you can consider here actually this begins in the country called uzbekistan and at the region called yangirak and actually scheduled from 2022 of march 22nd to 31st of march right and this is a scheduled period and the duration of the that is regarding a joint training exercise of both the armies called indian army and uzbekistan army then moving to the concept here previously the edition actually was conducted in raniket uttarakhand in india and that is in the year 2021 now it is actually taking part in uzbekistan and the region called yangiara rik is it clear and you have to concentrate here previously that is 2021 it actually took place in india but now in uzbekistan so just focus the host areas too and here this is actually an joint training exercise between the two armies what are the two countries participating here indian army and uzbekistan army then here you can consider here this joint exercise actually focusing on the counter terrorism operations and as well as the regions like semi urban terrain under the united nations mandate even including this actual the ob main objective aiming at enhancing and understanding the cooperation and as well as interoperability between the two armies that means even by conducting this type of exercise between the armies or navies you can consider like military exercises there actually they'll be focusing on interoperability areas what are the areas they used to strengthen and what are the practices they used to do in their country so by these they'll be sharing the best experiences and the ideas by conducting these type of exercises so here today it is in current affair like the exercise regarding uzbekistan army and indian army the exercise name you need to consider here it is all about exercise dust lick is it clear and 2022 represents third edition of the exercise and the joint training exercise between india and uzbekistan i hope that you are clear with the concept now let us discuss the next concept which is regarding defense news here it is in current affair all about indian army so recently indian army with the maharashtra police conducted suraksha kavaj 2 exercise what is the objective for this main collaboration of indian army with maharashtra police and the exercise called suraksha kavaj 2 exercise here actually it actually took place in lullagar which is at pune and the main objective is to counter any terrorist actions in pune this is the first and overall objective and even it actually involve the participation of counter terrorism task force which represents cttf of indian army and also anti terrorism squad of maharashtra police with the quick reaction teams and also dog squads even regarding bomb disposal teams of both the agencies which both the agencies which represents indian army and maharashtra police is it clear and then the actually the exercise main objective is to harmonize the drills and procedures which are undertaken by the army and police the overall objective is to the to counter terrorism 
right i hope that you were clear with the concept here first you need to consider here what are the armies and the police which state police actually collaborated and also about the excess title it is suraksha kavach to exercise which actually collaborated and conducted by the what are the two actual departments involved here indian army and as well as maharashtra police this exercise took place in pune and the objective focusing towards to counter terrorism so this is all about suraksha kavach to exercise between indian army and maharashtra police i now i hope that you were you are getting the concept clearly i now just discuss all about a current affairs which are regarding important days you can consider regarding your examination point of view also there will be the questions on regarding important days so here it is in current affair all about the important day called martyrs day which actually even called as shahid divas or else sarvodaya day what is actually it represents martyrs day or else shahid divas or sarvodaya divas then here actually this was observed on 23rd march what is the objective is there any historical background for this important day yes now let us discuss in detail so here if we move to the concept every year nation observes on 23rd march as a shahid divas or sarvodaya day here actually the main objective is to to pay the tribute to the death anniversary of the freedom fighters you can consider here india which remembers the three freedom fighters you can consider bhagat singh sukhdev thapar and shivram rajguru these three people actually led to the death by the hanging and here comes to actually who led their lives for the freedom of india and also you need to focus here 38th january is also observed as martyrs day or else shahid divas in the memory of mahatma gandhi so here you need to focus 23rd march and along with that 30 january is it clear 30 january is on the basis of mahatma gandhi as a remembrance and then moving to 23rd march as the three indian freedom fighters who were bhagat singh sukhdev and as well as shivram rajguru so you can consider here the reason is actually they were hanged to the death for assassinating the john sanders as a british police officer in the year 1928 but actually is it actually mistook the case all about for the british police superintendent james scott and also actually scott has ordered a lottery charge but regarding that actually which eventually led to the death of lala lajpat rai so these were actually attacked on the british officer then the british officer led a statement that to hang these three freedom fighters those three, three freedom fighters were bhagat singh sukhdev tapur and as well as shivram rajguru so on the remembrance of the indian indian freedom fighters for the freedom for getting the freedom and their struggle which actually represents and to pay the tribute for these type of revolutionary freedom fighters so here a day called that is regarding shahid divas or sarvodaya day on 23rd of march actually every year india celebrates this one of the important day and then next if we move the concept under obituaries so here it is in current affair all about a chief justice of india you can consider here former chief justice of india r c lahoti recently passed away just have a glance over the image recently the person called former chief justice of india that is ramesh chandra lahoti passed away at the age of 81 years even you can consider don't neglect even the obituary is considered the point of your examination even you can consider your previous year question papers from obituaries the questions were there if you can practice like if you were if you have went through any of your mock test or practice questions you can come across the questions even regarding obituaries so the main concept is that regarding obituaries how the questions will be regarding obituaries the questions will be on the format like you can consider here let us take an example here it is in current affair all about ramesh chandra lahoti right so maybe the question is based on the profession of a person previously what are the working areas of the person so based on these working areas there may be a one question so here the utmost question you can expect is from ramesh chandra lahoti is he is actually a former chief justice of india right i now this is one of the format of question which is big sorry based on the previous working areas of a person and if there were any achievements like let us consider an example like any of the highest civilian awards if the person has been received when he was alive so maybe based on those questions also there will be a chances and now 
If we move to the concept all about R C Lahoti, the person is known as former Chief Justice of India, and the previous areas, if you can move here, Justice Lahoti actually appointed as a thirty fifth Chief Justice of India on June first of two thousand four, and he was actually retired in the year two thousand five. And after serving this post, that means as a Chief Justice of India for one year, later actually he has moved. You can consider here. resigned in the month in the month of may 1978 and returned to the bar that is to practice which is mainly regarding the high court and also when you can consider he was actually transferred to delhi high court on february 7th may 1994 later appointed as a judge of supreme court in the year 1998 so you can consider here actually based on the all these areas like the previous working areas just remember the chronology or else just remember the areas he used to work as a chief former chief justice of india right so before that he used to work as a permanent judge and he has later appointed for supreme court judge and before that he used to work in delhi high court right so in this way as a story you need to remember regarding obituaries just the person's life story so that however the question will be you can answerable right so this is all about obituaries concept and with this we have done with our descriptive session everyone get ready to answer for the practice questions here actually this were the questions even you can consider by your previous year question papers and also the concepts whatever we have discussed in our previous session some of the questions were included just have a glance through each and every question in detail and try to mention your answers exactly in the comment section and now let us have a glance at the first question which is regarding what is the theme for world tuberculosis day of 2022 if we move to the options the clock is ticking or option b it's time option c is invest to end tb and save lives it's time to end tuberculosis called tb so just mention your exact answer go through each and every option clearly then try to mention your answer as i have said that regarding important days if it is based on numerical areas the question is based on the date but if the examiner can focus on theoretical ways so the theme is maximum number of times the question actually raised in your examinations you can consider previous year mock test also so here based on the theme and then if we move to the next question prime minister narendra modi recently inaugurated the biplop bharat gallery where actually it is located if we move to the options chennai patna amritsar kolkata or bangalore <clears throat> and next question if you can discuss here what is the theme of the wings india 2022 and here if you move to the options flying for all the highlights and flying for all india at the rate of 75 new horizon for aviation industry and option d is india global aviation hub then Moving to the next question is all about who has been actually become the first para athlete to receive Padma Bhushan award. Parallelly with this question, try to mention recently the person even has been received a Padma Shri. What is the name of the person, right? And then first, if we move to about the first para athlete to receive Padma Bhushan, Maria Pham Tangavelu, Devendra Dhajaria, Deepa Malik, or Pooja Jatya. So just try to mention the exact answer. apart from this question what is the other question including in this awards and honors one of the person recently received padma padma shri as a para athlete even regarding she is actually the first indian woman to get a paralympic medal that is regarding two medals at the same game and also to receive gold at paralympic games so just try to mention about the other person name regarding the second question whatever i have raised for you so just mention in comment section And next, if we move to the question call, what is the name of the joint military training exercise between Indian Army and Uzbekistan Army? All about which actually kicked off in March two thousand twenty-two at Engi Arak. And if you can move the options here, the question is all about the title of the exercise. At least you were perfect with armies. That means which country is actually participating here? Indian Army and Uzbekistan Army. So whatever related with the title, just have a glance. And here, excess shared destiny, excess dust lick, or else excess conjure, excess sea breeze, right? 
So just go through each and every option in detail and mention your exact answer and correct option in the comment section. So as I have said that titles were at most important areas which is regarding defense concepts or else any of the, any type of excess not only regarding defense right. So with this even we have done with the practice questions just try to mention your answers in comment section and also if you are having any of a doubts regarding subject wise just mention in comment section either it is previous day there is no issue I will be coming up with your doubt that means to clarify your doubts in the next session. Thank you everyone. We will be meeting in the next session with some other topics. Until then stay tuned, stay safe and stay home.